Folks, it's good to see you all again, and uh, being here with Pastor John in his office, uh, and he's, I don't know if you noticed, but he's got a few new pictures up here, and uh, family. <laughs> Just trying to declutter, memor you know. Memor memor memorabilia uh, to, uh, to, to look at. It looks good, John. Good yeah. to see this stuff here. Declutter and uh, make it more my own flavor, my own space, get more comfortable settled in, you know. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. Good to see you again. Getting the shelf there. So, you had a good weekend? I had a great weekend, and uh, I, was, uh, I was able to take a full three days off this weekend, and really en enjoyed that. And yesterday, uh, we had the power go off in our house, and so we decided we'd take a ride, went back to Joy's hometown, Port Alberni, had a look around, and caught up with a few friends there, okay. and it was a glorious day. And... Uh, and just seeing uh, and appreciating, uh, again, the, the beauty of this place where we live. We are such a blessed people. So gorgeous, yeah. yeah. And we, I hear that you got all dirty on uh, Wednesday night. Yes, uh, Wednesday night was uh, an event for our youth. We went to McNabb's Corn Maze. Uh, typically, the Corn Maze is closed, you know, after the 31st. So, uh, which is was the whole point, is that we could go in and not worry about destroying the corn maze and cutting through and being kind of crazy. Uh, so that's why we were able, that's why we went then, so that we could be a little bit crazier and, and get quite muddy. One of the kids fell down a couple of times just right in the mud. <laughs> there was sections where it was up to our uh, middle calf, you know, it was quite high the water in some areas. It was a lot of fun. That was great. Oh, to be yeah. 30 years younger again and call yeah. that fun. Yeah, and then uh, when I got home, the power was out that night. So yeah. <laughs> we also had a power outing. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's the that's the season. Uh, November is 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 the stormy month around here, and so you can expect almost anything to happen. Yeah. Yeah. But we had a great Sunday. It was we a, did. Yeah. It was we, good to good to hear you again and the worship team. Yeah, and, and uh, I was in the multi-purpose room as well, and it was really good to have. Uh, people there, you know, joining in and singing and doing all the COVID safe stuff, but together, yeah. uh, and kind of an odd experience to see myself on the screen and also be in person, but boy, it was a really good, um, good Sunday just all around. Yeah, it really was. And to honor our vets and, uh, I forgot, I, uh, left my poppy on my jacket, don't have it with me, but, um, I'm certainly wearing it, uh, inside. I uh, really do appreciate all that our, our veterans, uh, our frontline workers do for us, and it's a it's a it's a real privilege to have a time to just publicly remember and and recognize all the sacrifices that so many make in order to give us the good life that we enjoy. Absolutely, we're so grateful for everyone who's come before us and uh, really uh, fought for the freedom that we get to enjoy. Yeah. So thank you. Yeah. Well, we, uh, we listened to your message on Sunday uh, from Nehemiah. We're continuing in, in uh, the series in Nehemiah, and I'm preaching next Sunday, yeah. this coming Sunday. Uh, you gave a message uh, that had a lot to do with sort of um, warnings or um, a watch out, a caution of, of climbing the ladder and seeing how that can change you as a yeah. person. Yeah. Uh, why don't we flip open. I'm going to just read a couple of verses from, from your message. Nehemiah chapter 5, uh, verses 16 through 19. I'm going to read that. It says, uh, Nehemiah was saying, I also devoted myself to working on the wall and refused to acquire any land, and I required all my servants to spend time working on the wall. I asked for nothing, even though I regularly fed 150 Jewish officials at my table, besides all the visitors from other lands. The provisions I paid for each day included one ox, six choice sheep or goats, and a large number of poultry. And even ten days we needed a lar large, in every ten days, excuse me, we needed a large supply of all kinds of wine. Yet I refused to claim the governor's food allowance because the people already carried a heavy burden. Remember, O oh my God, all that I have done for these people, and bless me for it. It's a wonderful passage there, and. and uh... It, it's a great way to end that, that chapter, you know, it is saying, um, Lord, uh, I 
I know you've blessed me. I know you've honored me with this uh, title and this position and, and these powers. And yet, Lord, remember me for all I have done for my people. Mm -hmm. um, because they're your people. And I have this responsibility. It reminds me of a, a verse from an old song we used to sing. It says, all my work is for the Master. He is all my heart's desire. Oh, that he may find me faithful in the day that tries by fire. And, and folks, in any success that we have in life, any uh, honor that we're given, any um, great uh, reward, even financially, as, as we grow in, in our occupation, things like that, it, it, it all uh, just comes down to recognizing that it's all God's. Mm -hmm. And uh, what are we doing as his stewards? That um, some are given a higher, higher authority than others, and, 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 and yet we all see the same needs around us. So, so what are we doing uh, to do that? And oh, that we would have a heart like Nehemiah's mm -hmm. uh, to say, God, you've blessed me greatly. Make me a blessing. So, yeah. And before we started recording, uh, Paul, you and I were talking. Uh, I was I was mentioning how me as a 34 year old, I really don't feel like I have the the right or uh, experience or um, I'm just so young and inexperienced in a lot of ways to to really speak to this uh, because it feels like you know somebody who's at the top or someone who's gotten that life's experience and look and look back and, and give those words of wisdom. Uh, what would you say to to somebody like, not me necessarily, but someone younger who who hasn't gone through all of those those things or climbed that ladder or uh, you know gotten to that point in their life where maybe power is corrupted or anything like that? Sort of the speak to the younger generation. Well, I'd, I'd say uh, first of all um, that that you're a blessed generation. I mean, uh, this time of year, especially with Remembrance Day, we remember the sacrifices of so, so many in, in our past to give us what we have. And we are such a privileged people. We, um, we live in a, in, a, in a country of freedom, a country where we recognize the rights of individuals, uh, where we have so much uh, physically and uh, emotionally and uh, so it's important for us to, to remember that, first of all, we, we have much compared with most of the world. Mm -hmm. And uh, with that comes, comes responsibility. And then uh, to say, what am I doing to prepare myself for that day 20, 30 years down the road when I will have a higher income, when the house will be paid off, when the kids are gone, and what is my life going to look look like then what will I be doing and what will I be doing with what I will be blessed with by then and uh, to make sure we have this humble attitude like Nehemiah's to say God it's all yours I thank you for what you've given me uh, now show me what I should do with all I have and um, that would be my advice to a younger generation mm, I love it yeah it really is uh, a lot about perspective you're right yeah. I mean we do have so much and we're, we're blessed with so much and we should be good stewards of that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we've got a few things coming up that we need to uh, just uh, remind people of. And one of them is the Operation Christmas Child. Uh, although we didn't have a packing party here at the church, a number of families did take advantage of the reminder about uh, Operation Christmas Child to have their own family packing parties. And uh, the number of boxes have been packed this week, and we're looking forward to the distribution week on November 16th to 23rd. Our church will serve as a distribution point for the Mid-Island, and there'll be hundreds of boxes coming into our church, and uh, so there'll be a, a need for people to be here on standby to uh, help uh, receive those boxes, pack them into bigger boxes that will go onto pallets, that will be wrapped and then put on a semi-trailer truck and and uh, taken to who knows where. It'll be somewhere in the world that needs them. And uh, that's so to exciting. Be a, to be a part of that yeah. process is really an exciting thing. Yeah. And uh, we're so uh, grateful to those of you who've helped and and will contribute in the coming days to see this be a really successful event for the children of the world. Mm -hmm. 
And as a young family, when we participate in packing the shoe boxes, it really uh, it helps our kids to get their mind off of themselves. That Christmas is about me, about getting gifts, uh, what's on my Christmas list. But it really helps instill in them uh, that they are blessed to be a blessing. Yeah. Uh, so families, I would strongly encourage you to be a part of that with your kids. Take them shopping, uh, you know, pack, pack those boxes together. Uh, let them be a part of blessing other kids because the impact that they're making is not just for those receiving the boxes, but it is also for uh, teaching our kids to, to be a blessing as they have been blessed. Yeah. So very important kind of exercise and, and um, sort of awareness that we can bring to our families by doing things like this. And there was uh, an event held on uh, Sunday afternoon. Yeah. We haven't been able to witness yet until we're telling you about it today and you'll see it uh, next Sunday on yeah. our broadcast. But uh, we had one of our young people get baptized. So just share a little bit about that. Yes, yeah, so uh, Sunday after the service, uh, we had a family come in and uh, Alex Schapp, yeah. uh, who's in grade seven now, uh, he got to be baptized. His mom and his dad uh, did that with me and, and uh, did all the COVID you know, safety things. But we had a small group of friends and family come. There was even uh, some, some people in attendance uh, whom Alex invited, uh, but they weren't Christians. And they were curious and they were friends and they wanted to see uh, and they came because of Alex. And so Alex, I'm really proud of him because he, he wanted to share his decision uh, with his non-Christian friends yeah. as well. What a, what a great testimony that was. Uh, so you guys are going to get to see that on Sunday during the, the service uh, where, where Alex answers a few questions and he, you know, he, he gets dunked. And um, so much more than, when, you know, just getting dunked, I say it lightly, but what a, what a blessing and a joy it was to be a part of that and uh, get to share that with you guys pretty soon. Yeah. So. So, and, it's, and it's so good that... Uh, there are so many ways that we can be blessings and we can be witnesses. And, um, you know, for Alec to have that heart, share that with his friends, that's a, just a terrific encouragement. And we hope we see many more encouragements like that along the way in the coming Absolutely. year. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you, Lord, for those. I uh, also want to bring up Equip 2020, which is happening November 20th and 21st. It's a Friday night and a Saturday night. Uh, the vision behind this, families, is that this is going to be an annual conference. Each fall, uh, our church, our family ministries uh, department, if you want to call it that, uh, we're going to be putting on uh, an, a, a conference for uh, families to equip them in raising their kids to know Christ. And so while this year's content uh, has more to do with internet safety and, and talking about the dangers of pornography and those kinds of things in the home, uh, next year will be different. Uh, so each year, each fall, the plan is to ha have some sort of equipping event for our families. Uh, and then even throughout the year to continue the conversation, okay, how do we follow up with this? What do we do with this information now, uh, a few months you know, past the event? So uh, be looking for that information. And, and friends, please sign up. Uh, it's not just for parents. I mean, it's really targeted towards them. Yeah. But if you're a grandparent, uh, if you're somebody who wants to have kids but you don't yet, uh, if you're just an adult who, who needs to have a better understanding of what kids are dealing with right now, uh, it's really uh, it, beneficial not just to parents. It's a much broader group of people that this really could help. So sign up. You can look on our website to find all the information you need there. And it's really an inexpensive thing, uh, $20 that we're asking people to give. And if you need help with that, talk to us. We'd love to, to, to help you with that. You can even experience it in the multi-purpose room or in your living room. Uh, there's lots of ways that uh, this can be uh, experienced. So we've got uh, just uh, one more thing to talk about because I know we have a 15 minute time limit on this. We will be going back to live streaming in two weeks. That's right. Uh, in our church and you'll be hearing more about opportunities to come and uh, meet in the chapel as well as the multi-purpose room uh, to be part of that live stream audience. So look for those details upcoming. Yeah. And remember, you, you are, are loved. loved. Goodbye, everybody.